And um, did I critique one of your songs before? Yes. I, yes. I, I don't remember. I, which I can't remember what it was, but yeah. it, what I do remember is I think I really liked it. Yeah, Mary Maybe Lee it was a stream great. song. What was it? Yeah, your, your stuff is really good, but now we are streaming, so okay. let me just say hello. So hi, everybody out there. Good to see you. Um, yeah, and for those of you that are watching the stream also, uh, hi, how's it going? Welcome to SongNet. Um, we are here every first Wednesday of the month, and we always have a great guest speaker uh, that will be talking to us a little bit about the industry, answering your questions, and listening to your stuff. Uh, we've been doing this now for about 22 years, so that's pretty amazing. Actually, 23 now. So, um, yeah, as of April, 23 years. It's a long time. <laughs> um, and you know it's interesting too because one of the reasons why i know this is uh you know one of the venues that we called home for many years uh bob stain's coffee gallery just closed last month and uh that was a, a tough one for our community but we're still around and we're still finding places to play so we're really excited about a lot of good stuff um so if you're watching on youtube yes you can uh, throw something in the chat on the side there and if you're interested in uh, you know, really getting in here and, and asking questions and stuff, well, then you can do that uh, here on Zoom. Make sure that you get the Zoom link from us if you want. You can uh, try emailing me. I'll see if I can find that for, or whatever. Or if you got the link from Steve, you know, email showcase at songnet.info. Uh, you should have done that before if you want it to be here on Zoom. And we're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, so, Lenise, welcome. Good to see you here. Hey, hi everybody. I'm so happy to be back. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, you're you're one of our uh, favorite people already. So that's really Aww, cool. Am I the lucky girl or what? Thanks. <laughs> well, you're the lucky girl because you've got such an amazing cred. Uh, what, tell us a little bit about what's been going <laughs> it was on. It's all here. luck. All luck. No skill. Oh. <laughs> well, you've been doing a lot. Um I I know you've got some incredible past cred. You had uh, the Asia album. Um Breakfast in America, the Blondie Auto American, and uh, Grammys, and what else you got? Well, no, okay. Um, I was the assistant engineer on a lot of very cool records because I worked at the Village Studios, um, and that's where I honed my skills as an engineer. So I assisted on the, uh, the Asia album for 10 and a half months. So I learned a lot there and breakfast in America. I also assisted on and lots of other really wonderful records. And then that uh, helped me move forward to uh, eventually working with a lot of different artists and including Blondie, uh, which her auto American album um, was able to um, give me the recognition of being the first woman engineer to record a platinum album. So I'm very proud of that, kind of, you know, breaking that glass ceiling for the other people in the world. And um, so that's very cool. And uh, I've been Grammy nominated. I, ha I don't, I haven't won a Grammy yet, but mm. I have been nominated. So um uh, one of these days, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you're definitely going to get there. And Sound Girls, tell us a little about Sound Girls, because that's the exciting thing that you do. Yeah, Sound Girls is an amazing organization that uh, inspires and empowers and informs um, young women coming into the industry. Um, its main focus is on live sound. Uh, however, uh, the area that I was brought into um, oversee and, and encouraged was the uh, studio recording and production and it's just an amazing nonprofit um founded by carrie kais who is the monitor mixer and has been for pearl jam for over 30 years and she started this uh, organization and it there are a lot of uh, workshops and programs and uh, mentoring and support um, for women in LGBTQ communities. And uh, uh, I'm very proud to be a part of that. And so I do workshops and things for them. And it's really made a big difference for these women. 
Yeah, my, my friend Tatiana uh, is getting involved with that. So Yes, she was at my last workshop. She was, that was fantastic. That was just two weeks ago at the Village on what to expect as a singer-songwriter. This is for all of you, too, not just for women. Everybody, um, you know, people don't always know what goes on in a recording session, especially when they're recording their music for the first time. Um to go if if you've been blessed with the uh, situation where you get to record in a big studio with a um, engineer and producer and all of that, this was uh, to uh, inform, educate, and again empower uh, people to know what actually is the process and the different processes and things that go on so they'll know what to expect so they'll know uh, how to ask the right questions and um, be um, uh, a, a viable part of their own recording session and they can be in charge of what's going on with them and their music and that was the whole point so they would already have some idea of what goes on and what to expect. And if their headphones aren't right, it's okay to ask to say, make my headphones right. Or, you know, this isn't sounding right. Or I don't care for that mix right there. Or, you know, bring the guitar down a little bit or whatever it is to know it's absolutely okay to participate in your own recording session. And you don't just have to say well you know they're the big guys and all of that and they know what they're doing but i don't really like what's going on but yeah you, know, you know i'm too afraid to say anything well this was to totally you know forget about all of that and yes you absolutely can say whatever you feel about what you, what's going on and so to inform them and so they could participate intelligently yeah, that's that's a very good point, and especially even in a live uh, venue too. You know, there's a mm -hmm. lot of times where uh, an artist just doesn't realize that they can tell the the guy, "Hey, I need a little more vocal in my monitor. Can you do that, please?" And uh, that makes a big difference in performance. And that's absolutely, absolutely, and it's and all it is is uh, experience. And so this is designed this workshop, and I'll do more, not just for women this will you know it's clear that everybody could use some um a little practice and um exposure to what's going to happen for them if they're not really familiar with it and um so um yeah that's uh that's good but yeah live sound recorded sound any of that yeah it's important for everybody to be all participants in the process uh, right. Flo has just asked, uh, how can she find out more about that and get involved uh, in the workshops and stuff if she wants to be more round, round, rounded and all that? Well, um, that's a good question. This this particular workshop was, uh, and this is really good, Women in Music. Um, there used to be LA Women in Music, and uh, then it got combined with a uh, the head office and organizations in New York. So now it's Women in Music, WIM, the LA chapter. And that includes singer songwriters, engineers, uh, publishers, lawyers, uh, people in women in the music business on all sorts of levels. And so that is who sponsored this particular workshop. Um, there's another organization that uh well women's audio mission which is up by you merrily uh in san francisco that's um again that's typically uh students coming in it's a, a school but there are many um different organizations that um, um help singer songwriters and women and um you know, anybody else um, become informed. So this was Women in Music. I'm with Sound Girls. I'm also uh, independent. So um, if we are connected somehow, um, 
then, well, you know what, if I know I'm going to do another one of these workshops, I'll let Jimmy know. And, um, and he can reach out to everybody. So you don't even have to worry about that. Yes. Yeah, but I recommend post. women in music. Yeah. We always post stuff on our uh, Facebook page for sure. You know, Cause I can do that right away. Uh, quite often right. I'll forward it over to Steve and then Steve eventually gets it up on our website. Uh, and then of course on Facebook, you, you're welcome to hit us up personally and directly. Mm-hmm. You know, Denise is there. I'm mm-hmm. there. And um, you know, there's other opportunities too. If you're in the LA area, uh, you know, we were just talking about lunch. <laughs> oh yes, the audio you know, lunch. Audio lunch. That's always a great thing. You know, it's semi-invitational. So you know, if you are thinking about going to that, then make sure that you hook up with one of us. Well, yeah. And one of the things about that is that it's not really a good networking situation. So if that's um, what um, you know you're going for. Um, there, I can think of another one that I really love that I go to on Monday mornings that's called the Composer's Breakfast Club. So any of you songwriters, uh, it happens in Malibu. You have to be there at 9 a.m. on Monday, which is challenging for me, but I do it and I'm so glad I do. And, um, and you can um, uh, join it on Zoom too. So it's from nine to 11 and there's always a really good presentation of somebody who is, you know, they were talking about AI, um, what's going on with that. They had somebody talking about that. And then there's always a good performance and it takes place at a a club called Dreamland, which is right across from the Malibu Pier. And there is a buffet breakfast for $28 and, or if you just want tea and coffee, it's only $10. It's really wonderful money spent good networking possibilities. I've met some just tremendous people there who are either uh, composers or singer songwriters or um, music business lawyers, or it's just a great supportive creative, mindful community. Anybody who speaks or the music that they're doing um, usually uh, has some sort of benefit for, you know, the community or society in general. And um, it's not just all about them. They're doing tremendous things. So um, it's very inspiring. It's my version of church, actually. It's uh, I come out of there on Mondays and I just feel like I've just had church and look out. What was the name of this particular event or organization? Composers then? Breakfast Club. Okay. And um, there is a website for it. And um, and I know because of the pandemic, uh, there it became necessary for all of us to meet on Zoom. And the cool thing about that was we had people from all over the world because not everybody can make it to Malibu at nine on a Monday morning. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so this way, there was people from all over the world. And so now that it's opened back up and we can meet in person, they've also really embraced, um, you know, whoever is out there anywhere else. And so um, I encourage you to check that out and it is good networking yeah the uh, sapphire group too is another one here in la oh that's well that is that's kind of um well that's definitely invitation and you definitely have to be an, an engineer the audio engineering society came out of that les paul started it was one of the founders of the hollywood sapphire group back in new york Um, and it was just a monthly group of, uh, you know, the recording industry isn't that old and it has evolved in leaps and bounds, um, since, um, it's just over a hundred years old. So, um, there were a lot of things that were going wrong or things, you know, no standards established in the 78s. Um, you had to play your, uh, 78 made from Columbia Record Club on a Columbia 78 player, or there was uh, uh, RCA uh, and there were were three, Edison. 
And each one of them had a different speed, kind of like Spotify and Tidal and, and Apple Music and Amazon. All Every one of them have a different format, which is so irritating. But um, uh, so it was like that. So the Hollywood Sapphire Group came together to whine and moan once a month about all the crazy wrong things that were going on and how recording music or, or anything was developing and they are the ones who banded together and started the audio engineering society which is in charge back then and responsible for saying we need a standard that everybody can use to record records to do anything um that is recorded or played back um that can go to everybody that it's not just specific you know it's like v vhs and beta and um um sony 360 immersive and dolby atmos now you know those are two different formats and it's just crazy so they were responsible for creating that and back then you uh, all records were direct to disc so the they had to come up with a, a standard cutting device and that's where the sapphire came from because sapphire is harder than diamond and so for to cut records anything that was a mastering or vinyl recording acetate recording device had a sapphire needle of a certain size so everybody can have that and everybody could listen regardless of what the record company was or the manufacturer of their turntable or gramophone or any of that yeah and, and that's one of the things that's very cool about being here in la is that that's all accessible to everybody you know you just have to kind of get to meet somebody or know somebody that'll get you into those things uh, mm -hmm. i go to sapphire group every now and then <clears throat> and it is very very different because it is very technical the people that are there are very technical and they always have a technical presentation um honestly quite often i fall asleep at those <laughs> well so, but then they also have wonderful presentations like yours which i've just loved Thank about yeah. um guitar pickups yeah yeah guitar pickups i know that doesn't sound very uh, exciting but i was totally enthralled and that's because jimmy is so sincere and passionate about it that uh i learned a tremendous amount and really enjoyed it thank you well, thank you okay well uh maybe we should get to listening huh steve Sure. Yeah. Um, Flo had uh, requested to kind of go early because she's on the East Coast tonight. So um, we can uh, bring up one of her tunes there. Okay. And uh, let me uh, do this, do the share screen. <clears throat> Now, uh, typically, um, do you do, I, I think I recalled this, do I get to have some sort of setup? Flo, can you tell me a little bit about this song and what inspired it and um, your thoughts about it and, and your approach mm -hmm. and all of that? Sure. Thank you for asking, Lenise. Um, so this song is uh, one of my past older releases. The newer releases I have have not, um, well, I haven't released them yet. They're set to, you know, get released or they're in the production and recording process as we speak right now. So okay. yeah, the songs I had available are um, past releases. So Echo was um, the inspiration behind it um, was just um, sometimes the process that some people go through where, um, you know, you're thinking about someone that um, you let go of, you know, what could have been and how th their memory just keeps echoing through your mind and through your heart, right? Just almost that regret, like, why didn't, um, why didn't I pursue that, right? So that's the, um, that's the backstory behind the song Echo. Okay. We, well, we can all relate to that, I think, on some level. I hope so. I hope it's relatable. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> Oh, 
and clowns roll by Every single one turns into you and I And I can't help but wonder how it might have been If I'd opened up my heart and let you in Sorry, the rap part, I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, that's a different rap part. Yeah, so the, I, I apologize for that um, mistake with, yeah. Oh, don't from... worry about that. That's that's fine. I mean, wasn't that intentional? Oh, meaning, um, the yeah, no. <laughs> the lyrics didn't match with the recording. And yeah, so sorry about that. That's, that's horrible. A, that's a, well, that you know what? That's all right. That's that's fine. Um, good job. I mean, good structure. Um, uh, was this a demo? Um, no, this is well, this is like an older it was like release like years like years ago. But yeah. um, OK, yeah. So you could hear it's it's dated. Obviously, you could yeah. hear that. Hey? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, and the you know since then a lot of people have done songs in that style because it it works. And yeah. the nice thing about this song is that um, um, the the lyrics are and the story are very uh, concise, and 
um, so you know exactly what it's about. And, and that's always so important in the storytelling part of it that the verses um, support what the chorus says. The chorus tells you what's going on and then the verses say, this is an example of that and here we go. You know, and um, you did that very well. Um, I, um, the image of, you know, lying on the grass and looking up at the clouds and all you see is um, you and I, um, I have to just uh, be the grammar police here for everybody. And um, it's you and me is correct grammar. Oh. And, and because if you were yeah. saying it singularly, the way to, to know that for everyone, the little trick is um, if you were just saying, um, looking up at the skies and seeing, you wouldn't say I'm looking up at the sky, at the clouds and seeing I. Yeah. You would say I'm looking up at the clouds and seeing me if it was just about you, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how you can tell whether it's about um, you and I mm -hmm. or you and me. Mm -hmm. And um, so always test that in your head. If it was just singular, mm -hmm. would you say I or would you say me there? Mm -hmm. So um, that's and but you know what? Nobody cares anymore. Um, it seems um, another word that, that I have to put out there that just drives me up a wall is uh, people say in our country, anyways uh, that's not a word and but uh, I, but i know all of you know that right you don't you you don't say that because it's it's any is singular ways is plural so it's any way or all ways oh so all is plural yeah ways is plural mm -hmm. any is singular way is singular any way all ways mm. it's not that other thing that i'm you know it's like fingers on a chalkboard to me and especially if you travel in the rest of the world nobody says that except people here so just um okay enough on that um but uh, i i enjoyed your song flow and um uh good job i don't know what else I would do, except if uh, if you were going to shop it um, to have somebody cover it, um, you may want to demo it in a more current fashion because uh, or or not, you know, somebody could already hear the song as it is the way it is, even though it's it's in a dated style. It's still a strong song. And um what were uh you were just playing that just, just to see what i thought um you know the other songs that the other songs that i have that are more current mm -hmm. um they haven't been released yet um mm -hmm. and then the other ones are they they literally are demos they're like literally in the process of um they're in queue to get produced and recorded so i i just didn't um have anything on hand that i could um you know, play other than uh, some of my past releases. Well, that's, that's, I guess that's fine. I don't know what the rules are for song that, or songs, you know, songs alive, but uh, what you played me, I enjoyed. Um, and uh, yeah, good job. Um, I don't know what else to say about it, except you and I, and you and me, and you'd have to change the lyrics and, but that's it. And like I said, I'm probably one of the only few people who hears stuff like that anymore, who cares about it, because people say it all the time. It's definitely appreciated. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> You're so welcome. Thank you, Flo. Thank you. Good way to start the night. Thank you very much. Um, next up, we'll have um, Ed Lackey, and this is a song called My Reflections. Yeah. Okay, can you tell me a little bit about that, Ed? It's a song that, <clears throat> in the perspective of a guy looking in the mirror and speaking out loud about his life. All right. So light and breezy, right? Well, uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
but he's holding a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. I'm looking in the mirror, what do I see? My reflection looking back at me. Oh baby, what can I do? I'm so in love with you. Oh baby, look into my eyes. The way you look is no surprise. I've got to keep these feelings alive. Our love. We'll never die Honey, I keep looking for you won't you tell me what I can do? I don't know where you have gone. Our love has got to keep moving on. Oh, baby, look into my eyes. The way you look is no surprise. I've got to keep these feelings alive. Our love will never die. I'm looking in the mirror, what do I see? My reflection looking back at me. I don't know where you have gone. Our love has got to keep moving on. Oh baby, look into my eyes. The way you look is no surprise. I've got to keep these feelings alive. Our love. When they ever die All right. Wow. Well, um, but you said that it was about uh, a guy looking at himself in the mirror and, and wondering about his life. Um, now, what I got from it was that um, you were uh, looking, you had a relationship that, uh, or there was Whose baby? You or somebody else? Somebody else. Okay. Um, just checking. Um, and um, based on what you, how you described it, I thought, okay, I think this is not just about you and wondering about your life. Um, but um, it's sort well, of a lost love. A lost love, yes. Um, or lose it's it's on it's being lost it's yeah it's on its way out um now did you write the music and the lyrics yes okay um which instrument do you play just about everything you hear oh wow okay well it it because uh, there's quite a group you got going there in that track um I think as, as far as uh, the musicality goes, um, 
uh, I think it's it's uh, it's kind of busy. I I think I would um, kind of clean it up a little bit, and and you know um, the the negative space is often just as important as the 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 note itself. You know, BB King was always big on that. You know, um, you have to have that. Uh, bit of silence or spaces so the brain can conceive of what it's uh, listening to. And um, so I think it's a, a little busy for um, that it was pulling me away from um, the lyrics only because there was so much going on behind it. You know, I was just, I was getting distracted. So my, I would start with the track and I would simplify that and have um, have more of a hook and have more of a, a riff, you know, those two words um, that were um, recognizable or go, oh, that's this song. Um, because there was so much going on. I couldn't, like when you would come in for the, the next verse, uh, I wasn't prepared for that to start then. I didn't know where one was, you know, where, where the verse was supposed to start. And so you may want to define that a little more musically. Um, does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, so that people would know, I know there was a modulation and you would, you. so I learned that that's meant the next uh, verse was coming in, um, but in the beginning, I that didn't indicate to me that that's what was going to happen next. So you kind of want to set that up, and and the musical interludes between the verse and verse chorus, and then the next verse, I would cut those way down because um, that was almost like a solo section, and. Um, I would say if you're going to do something like that, have that, have one that that's that long and actually have a proper solo in it uh, after the second verse. And then you could go into the third verse. And, you know, what you want to do is tell your story and then tell your story and then tell it again. And, um, and that was taking me away from the story. And then I would be, then the vocal would come in and then I'd be, oh yeah, back because too much time was and my attention was moving towards someplace else. And so um, I say, cut that down. Um, I don't know how long that song was. How long was that song, Steve, Stephen? Just over three minutes. Really? Okay. Um, well, you could cut that down the and then the the um vocal and the lyrics um the the melody wasn't um uh, very strong for me it, um i couldn't tell where you were going with that um it took me a while to get to that but it was all kind of the same i would um line to line, I would have a more um, compelling melody a little bit, change it up, have, it was all pretty much in, a, you know, a few, like three or four note range, perhaps, where um, if you went down a little bit further or came up, I know on the third one, you did stay up there at the end. A little bit, but uh, I would work on having a, a slightly more concise, um, more hummable melody that somebody could remember. That one, um, I didn't know where to sing along, or I didn't know where you know. And that's what you want. You want uh, ultimately, you want an uh, earworm <laughs> if you can, so that people will be whether they remember the lyric that that melody will be going through their head whether they want it to or not and so um 
have it a, a bit more distinct and like i said hooks and riffs hooks and riffs are good um lyrically um i would um i would get out your thesaurus a little bit and have a few more metaphors perhaps instead of um it was so it was nice and simple i mean the dichotomy between the the very busy track and then the very simple lyric now that that kind of worked in in a way however um you need to say something that hasn't it's it's so hard to say some uh, but try to say what you were saying in a fresher way uh in the sense that the way you said it it was um it's been said like that before um and so i would uh, encourage you to look at that a little bit and see how you could say it the same thing but uh say it in a fresh way for you uh even though that's how you're feeling it um for it to ring true to somebody that's where the hook comes in you know lyrically if you could come up with with a a, a hook that would be a little stronger so some so you want because it it is a simple melody even after you change it it's not a very complex which is great because people remember those i would suggest having the lyrics um it's like when they do commercials right commercials and jingles they have like 30 seconds and every one of those seconds is absolutely vital that it be utilized to the ultimate degree and so they may not be saying a lot and there may be spaces but every one of those seconds and every one of those words counts and um i think you could work on this a little bit more and um define it in all three of those different areas just a little bit more you've got a good base the the concept is universal so um and the the deal with that is uh you know it's you have to say it ed's way does that make sense yes it does okay is very that good, helpful very good critique thank you very much you're very welcome i'm and sadly i just have to say you know you're you're coming off of the passing of one of the greatest lyrical poets and uh songwriters gordon ever lightfoot. gordon lightfoot then um so we've all been you know lamenting his passing and reviewing and going back and you know going over those amazing lyrics and stories that he told and how he told them and you know not many people um can hold a candle to him on that level and uh so um I have to admit, you know, I'm I'm still um, in that in that Gordon Lightfoot mode, so <laughs> so I may be a little tougher tonight. But but the thing is, his the his songs were simple, you know. Study those a little bit and just see where the poetry is in that and 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 the um, the wreck of the um, the Fitzgerald um the Edmund Fitzgerald yes god you know how it's too rough I can't cook for you or you know whatever those lyrics were the story that it told it wasn't saying they're hitting on the rocks and they're and they're going to crash and they're all going to die I mean that's what he's saying but the circumstances and how he says it and leading up to it um if you say to yourself oh my god my the, what's that if you could read, read my, my mind, love. Oh, that, that just brings you to tears. Tale. That's just one of the saddest songs ever about, you know, it was, a love it was also lost. a perfect song, too, so that's really good. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, it is perfection. And and just melodically and 
the places that he goes with that, all the different notes, all the different chords, the journey he takes you on, and it all just, you know, you, you just crumble when you hear that and think about it, how it just ultimately sad that is. Yeah. And, you know, uh, so yeah, look into that, use, you know, and see how you can impact your own writing with that Thank you. knowledge. You're so welcome. Thank you. Okay, um, next up, uh, we have John Bernard. Oh, just a note, um, uh, Lenise, if, you, if, if you've heard enough, just give me the high sign and you know, you don't have to listen to necessarily the entire song. Oh, okay, well, yeah, uh, unless you want to, that's fine. Well, just... so many times there's, you know, the surprise at the end. Gotcha. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, just, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, right. well, that's how a song often builds, 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 builds right. you know, and yeah. so uh, I don't want to miss any of it. Okay. Let me share screen here and we'll listen then. So who are we, who is this and, and what's this song about? Oh, let me, uh, hold on. John, you there? Yes, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a song that was written with uh, Marilee and a couple friends of ours. One of them was Patrick Bjorn, who is from Paris. Oh, okay. So he's a big mucky muck with publishing over there. He's a big lawyer. Anyway, mm. I, I don't know exactly what he does, but I heard him sing and he goes, oh, no, 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 I don't sing. I said, yes, you do. And he sounded great. So we wrote this song to fit his voice. It's just a very, very simple concept about missing someone. And part okay. of it's French. Mm -hmm, I say. Yeah, and he's it's, from there's France. the rain. It's yeah. the rain. C'est la pluie. Oui. Oui. So that's that's what this is. It's just a little simple uh Two Lovers on a Bridge. You ever see that film? Which one? Two Lovers on a Bridge. No, French. I oh, should anyway. though, huh? Anyway, um, it's just a very simple little French song. Okay. Love those. What a shame, quel dommage, je ne sais pas, explain, c'est la pluie, it's the rain, what a shame, what must I do, que dois-je faire, la retrouver telle qu'elle était. What a shame Elle est partie D'où marchons son Elle est partie Reviendra-t-elle Will she ever Tell me never It's the rain What a shame Reviendra-t-elle Jamais sans elle If she's gone well, she's gone What a shame La pluie s'efface Quand le soleil paraît Un arc-en-ciel Pour elle et moi What a shame Quel dommage Je ne sais pas What a shame Wow. Oh, ooh la la. <laughs> Quel dommage. Bien sûr. Um, beautiful, sad, French. Um, I really liked it. Uh, I, uh, what I kept feeling I wanted to to hear when you'd say, um, oh, she's gone, well, she's gone. Mm -hmm. What a shame. Instead of the same cadence, 
that the other ones, I would have changed the cadence of the last one just so all three lines didn't have the same cadence. That was that was um, just one thing that popped in um, my head right at the first verse. I, I wanted the last what a shame to have a different um, cadence to it. But um, it's such a French song and such a French way of thinking. It's like, you know. Uh, well, I had him they, there. He spoke they don't labor over love lost too long. <laughs> no. That's true. They aren't Italians. <laughs> yes, they do, but they don't. But, you know, there's more. And uh, my heart is broken. And, ooh, you know, look at you. No. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, boy, but so what else can I say about it? Um, I love the story. I love how the French and the English go back and forth. Um, uh, very nice, nicely done. Um, lovely little ditty. I love the instrumentation. I love that it's a waltz and you know dancing through another romance and. Um, that was the only thing that jumped out at me was that I would just want to hear that last line um, sung differently. Mm -hmm. What a yeah, shame. I, now, and, and that could just, you know, since, since everybody's asking me what I think, that's what I think. <laughs> that's great. That's great. I, I appreciate it. Um, I, you know, he, he uh, it was his first time in singing in the studio. So we had to, you know. Oh, but, and he, yeah. and that's not his that's not his first language. So singing in a different language, of course, a lot of people can't speak English, but they sure can sing. Yeah, in, in different, you know, because they've learned lot. it phonetically. But yeah, he, he had a wonderful lilt to his voice, and I just went, "Wow!" Yes, I, I drove him, and I he was on one side of the mic, and I was on the other, and I was, you know. <laughs> yes, yeah. So but, it, worked, um, it worked out great. It worked out yeah, great. It, it worked out very well. And it felt um, kind of spontaneous. It didn't feel labored yeah. over, right, which right. is nice. It felt like it just kind of popped into your head and almost, <laughs> oh, this is going to sound strange. Almost like Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins <laughs> breaking out and singing, even though that, that I don't know why that popped in my head, but that's kind of what would mm -hmm. happen, you know? And sure. um or um, Gene Kelly, or right. somebody. It, it just sounded like a, a thought process came out in song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And- uh, right. Capture those moments, you know? Yes, and, yeah, and, it, and it's, you know, uh, and then that moment's gone. Yeah. It's on to something else. Yeah, it wasn't right. one of those, it, I didn't get the feeling that, that it was, um, what came across to me was that this is what he was feeling like then and going, oh, darn. Oh, well, <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Can Have I you lunch? noticed that like, when you're working in the studio, those first two takes are so important. Oh, gosh, yes. I mean, everything else is too thought out by that time. But man, it, it starts so losing yeah. that. You know, I, I usually give it three and sometimes four you know, depending on the, the singer, but I'm always recording that first take, even when they're yes. getting comfortable. That's yeah. because quite often, you know, the energy for that, um, if it takes any more, if if I do three and they say, oh, please let me do just one more, um, mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll do it because if they've, you know, something popped in their head that they wanted to do it a certain way, then mm -hmm. I will run with that. But, um, you know, but, uh, and that's the same with not just singing, but cutting the music as well. The musicians, it starts to sound sure. tired, you know, I, and you're going to start getting diminishing returns. And so that's one of the um, banes of digital recording is that that's right. you can make. Yeah. So I don't record that way. I record like I'm still recording the tape and, and I, right. I insist on commitment and, and um, you know, taking those three, maybe four takes, comping it right then, you know, saying, okay, this works well with this and this and this, and then, and then boom, that's the vocal done. 
dun, right. dun, dun, dun. and then everything else works around that. The sad thing is that uh, how much music has we missed with digital? Because they say, like, for example, if you were recording Louie Louie today, they said, hey, that's fine. We'll fix it in the mix and we'll straighten it out. No, don't mess, don't mess with Louie Louie. That's how it is. Well, I mean, there fine. you go. Yeah. There are a lot of beautiful mistakes yes. that um, would be, you know, we aren't quantized and, you know, we aren't, and the perfect 12 tones is only something that happens really in, in the, you know, the Americas. Um, you get out in other countries and there's 12 tones and microtones and all sorts of things vocally. Mm -hmm. And the blues definitely, and um, you know those blue notes and sliding into stuff, and and it's it's intention. Yeah, you know it's it's what as a, one of the biggest things, and it just seems obvious, but it's not. Um, way back when I was working with Donald and Walter, on. Uh, with Steely Dan on, you know, Asia, the Asia album. And Donald would say, I don't want it perfect. I just want it right. There you go. That's And uh, that's point. for him is kind of the same thing. But um, but other wonderful songs, and there's subliminal time changes, you know, that uh, back then nobody used to click. Yeah. You know, yeah. If, if a drummer had to have a click, he'd go, no, oh, too, you know, he's not, must not be very good. And, but that's not necessarily it. What um, people expect now, though, is a more perfect recording, but there's still subliminal time changes from beginning when it's starting to ramp up, like I said. And then when the excitement happens at the end, if, if that's the kind of song it is, there, it's going to be faster. You measure the tempos and mm -hmm. the beats per sure. um, minute that it's it's faster. Mm -hmm. And that's just how we go, you know, naturally. Mm -hmm. And so that that click is actually okay for the right drummers to know how to speed up and slow down and do all of that. It's just kind of a guide. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, um yeah, it's I love dirt on the tracks. I really do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, me too. I won't take any more of your time, but thank you. Thank you for listening. Certainly. Thank you. Well, we've got on to other things that I think everybody, I hope, mm -hmm. um, enjoyed hearing oh, yeah. about. So commentary thank you. Commentary. Yes. yes, your commentary <laughs> is perfect. Okay. Uh, next, we have Mary Lee Weaver, and um, the song is called, um, let's see if we can get, Job Never Started. Oh, okay. tell me about that, Marilee. Um, I was working with a band called Sugar in the Gourd, and there was four of us girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the women is uh, Lynn Sokolow, and, and her, her husband is Fred Sokolow, the guitar player. Mm. He's kind of a, a legend, but anyway, Lynn wrote these words and she said, here, Marilee, you know, put it, put some music to it. And then Fred heard it, the guitar, and he put his thing to it. So that's what you will hear. Oh, nice. So what's the story? Uh, it's blues and it's about doing it, you know, instead of not doing it. It's like, um, you know, the, what's, this, what's the saying? 90% uh, of it is showing up. Mm hmm. So th this is like, uh, you know, do doing it instead of sitting back. Yeah. Or just talking about it. Yeah. How so many people, you know, there's they're dreamers. They're not doers. Yeah. It's great when somebody's close. When I was a little girl, bad luck was my fate. I lost my daddy before I turned eight. Got beat up and put down. 
from morning to late And I figured out Life was no piece of cake The chip on my shoulder You'd weighed more than me Didn't know, didn't care Who I wanted to be Not giving up Was a way to be free Until someone wiser Came and helped me see The job never started Can never be done The game never played Can never be won A life never lived A race never run A job never started be done I got myself up one day at a time for every step forward I fell too behind sometimes I travel weary sometimes I travel blind but So true. So true. Whoa. You know, I've not heard it put that way before. So uh, I like that. I like that lyric. I like, I like the setup. Where, um, now, what was the name of the woman who wrote the lyrics? Lynn Sokolo. Lynn Sokolo. Okay. Got to write that down. Um, and Fred Sokolo is her husband. Okay. Um, very nice and your vocals great thank you you did a good job nice voice um um as mostly my thoughts i'm trying to think how what what would i do differently or what would i do with that um um those they're mostly production um thoughts in other words, um, I don't think I would have put uh, in a background vocal but a singular one so soon. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I would have waited with the two. Okay. Um, so maybe pull that one out and see how it sounds to you. Because uh, what that did, there was your voice and then there was one other voice. So what it was doing was making me look at you and then look at that voice and look at you and look at that voice. So um, that's why I found myself doing where if, if it was two people singing background, then, um, uh, then that, that smoothed it out behind me and wasn't 
pulling me away from your vocal. Uh, also in the uh, chorus, um, in the third line of it, um, I may have dropped out the, the backgrounds right there and then brought them in for the last line okay. just to break it up a little bit because it was solid background right. vocals all the way through. So for right. aural interest and um, I may have uh, going into the, the third line, um, the turnaround of the, of the chord, I think I would have done sooner um, without playing it. Uh, um, I can't really say it, but it seemed like uh, the first two lines of the chorus, it seemed like the third line was going to be starting in the same place that theirs did. And then it, mod and then it went to the, the next chord, but I would have done it earlier. Does that make any sense? Come in earlier on that line? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That I would have done that there. Um, Jimmy, do you want to talk about that in the, as far as chords go? No, I actually liked it the way that it was. My thought was that I thought I've heard the song before. How old is the song? Oh, let's see. It went, it went through the COVID. Uh, maybe about a year before, about five years old, maybe six, more like five. Okay, because did you ever sing that one, at, that song, that? No. Yes. <laughs> yes, I have entered this one before. That's what I thought. Yeah, in fact, way, way um, back, I, I, thought I remember yeah. John john kalar singing it with you guys maybe i'm not sure yeah john kalar is has sung songs with us he's a backup singer he's no longer with us but i know yeah I miss him too but yeah wonder what we sang with john kalar having a good time with you anyway having a good time with you maybe yeah. with john kalar okay but yeah i love the song this is a great one yeah, it's a it's a real strong song. Tells a story, you know, starts out and then, boy, it goes right into like bam, you know, um, very strong hook. But I like and, what you're saying, you know, about mm -hmm. uh, coming in, you know, by itself, just the vocal, maybe by itself or two, but and then starting, you know, it it just adds, like you say, spaces, you know. Mm -hmm. they they just they just add yes so so that's what you want to do you want to build you want to build and um and that's what you did i just would have i would have tried a couple subtle different changes yeah. as far as that goes and maybe um you know here you're using a your basic blues um format uh -huh. so you've got to kind of put something in there that makes it distinctive we, not just his guitar playing which was great um but maybe uh i don't i don't know um a percussion sort of thing or um that's interesting just just a thought almost like a uh the way you're singing it and the and the um uh, the background vocals were kind of like a, you know, uh, made me think of Dan Hicks and the hot licks sort of a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so that era, so it could have a kind of a, um, um, something going on somewhere. That's just a thought, you yeah. know, I, what I would do would, at that point, it's all subjective. You've got your basic, roots there so how what um could be done to uh, make it distinctive that people you know again they hear that one thing and they know exactly what song it's going to be well, and right. um so you may want to have start out with a hook with a rhythm thing that is mm -hmm. you know um because it's a it's a really good song it's worth spending some time right um doing yeah i felt like it was the it. same like you said that all the vo vocals are all the you know everything's layered on top of each other you know but that 
that uh, percussion thing. I always thought it should just explode. You know how you want songs mm-hmm. to explode? <laughs> well, know. because she's she's exploding. Mm-hmm. She's a- awakening, you know, and uh, and woohoo, look out, you know, and and uh, yeah, I think so. I think Bonnie Brake could do something great yeah. with that, you Thank know, you so much. and uh, yeah. and the production value on that. Um, you know, just just think in terms of um, every every instrument counts and every note that it plays counts. Um, so you want it to have its own um, life, kind of, um, because it is that basic blues thing. So what makes this unique? Yeah, you know, and um, it's worth it's worth trying some things and and playing around with it thank but, you um but good job yeah i really like that and again i like your vocal I, I mean your voice and all of that so you so i know if you came up with some different vocal line or whatever you, you could knock it out like nothing so um <laughs> um that would be fun to work on together thank Just you saying. You know, go go onto the play play pin and pull out all the toys in the toy box and see what happens. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're so welcome, right. Mary. Thank you. Okay, next up we have uh, Stephen Medeiros, and it's called uh, "Carry My Soul." All right, tell me about this song, Stephen. Hi, Denise. Um, I so I wrote this song and rewrote it multiple times last year, and I just we just recently recorded uh, this fully mixed demo, and I'm starting to try to pitch it a little bit. And what's the song about? Carry my soul. It's kind of a prayer song, is the way I would probably define it. Okay. Yeah. It's a hymn. Uh, I don't know that I'd call it a hymn. I'll let you tell me what you think. Okay. Yeah. All right. I love awesome. your com- your comments have been awesome. Oh, well, thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. I, I, it's all about you guys. Yeah. I got almost a full page of notes here from things that you said. You had oh, some wow. gems, real gems in there. Oh, wow. Write a song. <laughs> Carry me to the places you meant for me to be. Strengthen me in spaces my eyes weren't meant to see. My beating heart holds the hope that I need to believe. May these hands. Play guitar while I sing out of key Lord, carry me as I grow While you let me know You will safely shelter my soul Till the day my spirit lifts From this earthly gift Lord, carry me Carry my soul Sorry for the things that I've done Trying to ease the pain Until I was numb Thanks for battling To nurture my tortured soul Giving me a second chance to be whole Lord, carry me as I grow While you let me Safely shelter my soul Till the day my spirit lives From this earthly gift Lord, carry me Carry my soul my 
That is beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank it you. is a prayer. It's, uh, um, yeah, you, you called it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't even know the definition of him, actually. So uh, I, maybe it is a him too, but it's certainly yeah. a prayer. And um, wow. Um, beautiful lyrics. We didn't. We didn't have the lyrics to follow, or, or I didn't see any lyrics to follow for me. But um, but what I heard, um, wow, well, it was just right so there. good, just so good. I'm trying <laughs> trying to think what I would do differently because what you did so nicely was with that electric guitar and all, and you you did build into that crescendo that you mm -hmm. know you you brought us there. Yeah. Yeah, I had Can I get an amen on this, everybody. Amen. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got me there. You yeah, took me they, where you wanted me to go. And yeah, uh, they did a really good job with the instrumental track. Those are all live instruments, you could probably tell. Yes. And and they mixed it really well. Um yeah. so yeah, I'm really happy with it. That's a that's a demo that I'm trying to pitch um to some christian labels and oh boy well, also... you shouldn't have any trouble i don't think what do you think jimmy i think it works well, where was that done that was done at uh baird music productions in uh it's just outside of nashville i think it's in barry barry hill so it's eli baird is is the founder they're like third generation they've been around for a long time yeah they've i was recorded, gonna say that name's real familiar they've recorded a lot of great uh country artists over time and they do a lot of demos for songwriters so yeah, this one is of the guys first... that you just send them the song and then they do whatever yep. they do. Yeah. yep i chose the vocalist out of this the team of vocalists oh, that so they had yeah it's almost ai isn't it no, no, it's all recorded live. There's no know, AI in there. What I'm saying is they, somebody else interpreted your thing. You didn't do it, um, but it was your vision. I, yeah, I, I, I did. I actually did record a vocal at that studio. So I have a vocal, my own vocal recording of this in case I want to release it sometime later. Mm -hmm. But but I I felt like I needed a stronger vocal if I sure. wanted to pitch it to a label. Oh yeah, publishing this, guy, no. this guy's in. I thought his voice fit the song. I thought it was. I you. was really happy. Well, I wish it was. But <laughs> next time I'll play mine. I thought about playing mine just to see what you know what kind of feedback I would get. But that's okay. well another time perhaps. But boy, this sure. was this was um, okay. That's how it's done, children. Um, do you get your publishing demo done properly? It's these days you have to have that, especially in that style of music, because that's how everybody else does it. You need to be competitive and the old days of, um, you know, just playing your guitar and singing into your cassette and mm -hmm. whatever. Um, a lot of times, the, uh, you know, uh, the music supervisors or publishers or whoever you're pitching it to, um, they're so inundated and they're so busy yeah, that they, that's true. if it, if it doesn't snag them uh, in something that's relative to them, if it doesn't like hit them somehow, 
right away um it, boom it's out and right. um so um always make it really easy for whoever you're pitching it to don't don't send a really nice package CD with all this stuff and everything that they, they don't have time to try to open it. Um, and they're the first ones to tell you that just, I just want the song. I want two or three words to tell me it's like this or this mm -hmm. it's this meets this. Um, right. And so, you know, help them so they can help you. Um, but uh yeah, so having it done like that was was very smart um, for especially that genre. And um, but you did you wrote the lyrics and you wrote the melody, right? Correct. Yes. OK. And yeah. the chord progressions and all of that. They didn't. Yeah, they didn't do any of that. OK. Yeah, I just I just sent, the, I just sent them a chord chart and a scratch vocal guitar track and they took it from there. And oh I, boy. I sat in on the production, so I got to kind of and I told them what I wanted to sound what I you know, what the model of what I wanted it to sound like. And sure. they, they knocked it out in 30 minutes. It was amazing. Yeah, they're Great so experience. good. Well, but also, you know, that there's the point right there. You already knew what you were referencing. And that's a really important thing um, when you're shopping a song or when you're coming up with um, a, a vibe. Um, it's always, you know, that, that's not cheating. That's not cheating. If you've been inspired by a style or if there's something that you like or if you hear a song that you want your song to, to sort of sound like without, you know, plagiarizing it but just having that sound or you know the instrumentation that's not stealing or you know there's something mm -hmm. that you liked about this thing you can right incorporate it uh, uniquely into your own music and um i i highly recommend that because uh that keeps you kind of focused on mm -hmm. and you can go back and reference it to see if you're you know, fulfilling that image that you felt in your head. And so it was so good that, that you were able to guide them because you had a reference and you had an idea in your head and um, that helped them tremendously come up with that beautiful um, arrangement and performance. Yeah. I found that out. Uh, a lot of the sync, good, really successful sync writers always use reference tracks for yeah. everything they do and i kept hearing that over and over again i thought well you know that's a good way to direct people that are going to mm -hmm. produce it for you right and engineer it and play it for you so yeah, yeah. and and uh, for any of you who are singers that's a uh, another revenue stream for for you to be a, a publishing uh, vocalist um i've worked with a few artists who do do that and um, and publishers are always looking, you know, because especially in Nashville, they get the, there's like this one guy and it could have been this guy, but I've heard it from other people that every publishing demo has it in that genre has his voice on it. And one of the artists I did a record for, uh, moved to Nashville. And, um, that's one of the ways he's getting his foot in the door, um, is by doing publishing demos because they're so happy to have a fresh good voice so there's that who knew um but uh gee i, I don't quite know what to say about that well thank Even, you thank you for all your comments i like i'm so happy you like my song i really am. i like your song a lot um without studying it more uh, to know the lyrics, so I, I don't know what I would um, change w without really going over it. If there's anything right. I would change or say differently or whatever, I just know that it really moved me. The the production value moved me. Um, yeah, so good job and good luck with that. Thank you. Appreciate I'm, it. I'm curious. You couldn't see the lyrics last time? No, there's this black screen. Yeah. Really?
and I for, I I was Ryan listening so was intently. I was so into it. I forgot to even think about that. Um, I like that. That's yeah, good. That's good. So, <laughs> yeah, that's what we saw. Yep. Just just black right now. That's Can all you we see now. Nope, just blank. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> yep. That's a Pardon that's me. a word file. I don't remember that for some reason that. That's weird because on my end it's perfectly fine. That's yeah, it's not not showing up here, so I don't know. Maybe. Well, that's nice. That's I'm a word file. Now finger. the other lyrics you can see, right? Yeah, all the other ones were fine so yeah. far. Yeah. Huh. Oh, that is weird. Okay, because like I say, on my end it looks perfectly normal, and that, that's okay. Um, well, let's, let's pull Pat's up and see how that looks. You'd have to put it into Word. Well, to be perfectly honest, the text file, I think, can you see what I have up here now? No. No. Blank. Really? Blank. You're kidding. This, this, You can't see this file I'm moving around? I can take you a, a picture with my phone and send it to you. <laughs> no, nope, yeah, because this is another set of lyrics. I can, can you... see black and your pointer or your cursor. Ah, and yeah, that's the cursor. It. Wow. Yeah. I, what, yeah. What is wrong? I can, I can follow the cursor <laughs> Bounce the bouncing along ball. with the music <laughs> or um okay um all right let me see if you can see this one can you see this set of lyrics nope nope nothing has changed it's got to be something that in my settings i guess or something you are screen sharing live uh that's really bizarre. Let me see. I've got share sound. Oh, I'm going to look in the chat while we're doing this because I, I'm really myopic. I can't listen and read at the same time. <laughs> okay. Anyway, you can't see these lyrics now, huh? Nope. No, no lyrics yet. Let's see if we can. It's just I've got, got the file up, and it's. I don't know why. I mean, I'm sharing my screen. Can you see everything else? Nope. I just all we see is the sidebar with everybody that's participating and everything else black. Really? Ay, ay, ay. There's got to be some setting on here that I'm missing here. Any Maybe you're anything? aiming at an alternate screen or something. Uh, you know, blank, hmm. blank screen somewhere. Is and then also only? just one one other note on your thing there, Lenise, where reference tracks are important because it's also where people find you know the sounds like you know and that's mm -hmm. a very very important thing when you're pitching something because uh yeah. especially film and tv you know yeah i need something that sounds like and then they say, oh yeah well this is a hit song but it's going to cost us too much well this one sounds like but how about, how about now can you see it now? Still nothing no you know what i'm looking at the okay. chat and there is um a comment um made by pat and um, about job never started. And you know what? I agree with you. Uh, it could be played just a little bit faster. You could pick up the tempo on that one, Marilyn, yeah. I think. I agreed. I answered him. I said, uh, ah. thanks, thanks Pat, for, for the info. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I think that Thank would you. give it uh, more energy as well. Uh huh. Okay, well, let's ignore that for the moment then and go on to the next okay. one. This is the last one, actually. It's my own. Uh, Jimmy, actually, you we got Pat, one. right? Pardon? Pat, we haven't somewhere. heard from Pat. I, but Pat didn't submit anything, right? I didn't oh, submit anything. I'm just here for the ride. Oh, okay. okay. All, right, All right, then. And then we got Steve. Go ahead, Steve. Okay, Alrighty, Steve. So this is called For the Credits. And you can't, I'm sharing my screen. You can't see those lyrics. No. Oh, oh well, I don't know. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, okay, tell me about the why. song. Um, okay, so this is a, I guess I got call it an angry lover song. <laughs> um, <laughs> it goes, this goes way back to like literally my college days. And uh, it was one of those things where um, somebody you're going out with winds up with someone else you didn't quite anticipate and um, you're pissed off, basically. <laughs> this, is, this is the context of this one it's called that uh, can happen uh, even when you're out of college too there you go that's for sure this is called for the credits It 
It's, it takes me back to college. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a little prog rock, a little Jefferson airplane. I can hear. Um, um, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Grace singing. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, well, um, and then I it, it made made me think for a tiny little bit a little Simon and Garfunkel, early Simon and Garfunkel. Okay. You know, um, harmonies, um, but um, uh, without being able to to read the lyrics, um, and that helps me see, you know, a little better what the the progression of lyrically how the song's going, mm -hmm. um, instead of just trying to listen to it all. Um, it, it's interesting. It's a, a very, uh, the style is, is very retro, like I said, prog rock kind mm -hmm. of, and, and the instrumentation, the same thing, you know, that fuzz guitar, there was a lot of fuzz going on in that, um, in the music track. I would, I would want some of that taken out. So when you did the guitar, with that fuzz on it, it would be distinctive instead of just, it was like a blanket of it. 
and I wanted the, some of that to go away. That's just what I was feeling with it. It was just, you know, it was constant. So it wasn't doing this with that, um, with that sound, okay. that particular effect. Um, you got to be careful with that stuff, you know, that you don't overdo it to where it just kind of masks everything. Um, so I would pull back on that and be a little more deliberate with the, the use of that. Um, as far as structure goes, it was uh, kind of an interesting structure. Um, not your usual um, way of, of putting, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Um, what I, I know that the the chorus was small, and so you only you did that you repeated the line, and it was twice. So, um, um, I kind of wanted you to say something else the second time. Okay. So was, um, and I wasn't really clear. Did you stay for the credits? That means uh, did you finish the class, or did you watch the whole movie? um or both um watch the whole movie yeah watch the whole movie yeah. i mean you know what because you brought up college so i was thinking college credits so oh, okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> no no this was more he, he's thinking of her with this other guy and then she's kind of taking a bow at the end of her performance with this other fellow okay and then she did she stay for the credits after that meaning what uh like you know the credits for being a good love maker oh that she 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 got credit or he got credit or it's like her performance was good you know oh, her performance was good yeah okay and she stayed and gave a bow right <clears throat> okay um because that's not really clear to me okay Okay. just right. saying that you know it's a, it's a little ab it's abstract and that's okay but it was a you know some of us are aren't that poetic i guess or something um <laughs> uh, uh so I'm, yeah i was thinking what kind of credit i've seen the credits rolling but then also oh well did you know do they get to graduate now um so um, college, yeah, but go on. yeah um <laughs> We started it. Um, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, uh, it, it's, I, I think it needs um, a little more definition or without being able to read the lyrics, I'm, um, again, I can't really tell what you were saying com okay. completely. Okay. If you were really pissed off at her, I didn't get that totally. Okay. Um but maybe I wasn't hearing all the, the lyrics correctly. Okay. Um, but, um, and I'm glad you didn't stay for the credits <laughs> yeah. at the end. Right. Um, that was good. Thank you for doing that. That That's a good turn, you know. Right. But again, I'm not, it, it wasn't clear to me what staying for the credits meant. Well, the line before it is, um, did you have your fun crawling on your knees? Yeah, well, that's 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 kind of racy. Yeah, <laughs> that's more to the point, you might say. I didn't. Yeah, that was to, to the too point. Too explicit, you know. But <laughs> yeah, rug burns and stuff. Um, <laughs> sorry. <Yeah. laughs> well, it's, we're, you, talking it, right? <laughs> we're talking college here. We're talking college here. Okay. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a bad uh, movie you don't stay for the credit yeah, yeah right yeah. well there you go you know um um it's like were you proud of yourself for doing all these things you know that kind of thing yeah okay um i would have to look at the lyrics a little stronger okay. or a little okay. bit more to to be confident that that's what you were going for okay um because if I stay for the credits, it's because in a movie, it's because the movie was really good, like you right, said, and I right. want to see who did what. But right. the, you, they already know who did what. Right. So um, I'm just trying to 
you know, the it's important that the message that you say um, is clear okay. um, to people or that they can make it clear for themselves, you know, back mm -hmm. in the, you know, early Genesis days and, and, you know, gentle giant and all of those sort of things. They were, and Jethro Tull and all the uh, allusions to things. Um, you could have your own images, but it was um, images were conjured, whether they were the same for everybody or not. Mm -hmm. And um, this one, I wasn't sure what image to conjure. Okay. Okay. So I would um, make it clear. Yeah. yeah, I would get some clarity. Am I the only one? What is? Um, did anybody else? Was it really like really clear to everybody else? I did not understand the some of those. The last words of the line. I didn't know what that was. But uh, it sounds like it could be a great song. Mm -hmm. you know, and, um, yeah, but we didn't get to read it. So it's, it's not quite as easy to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A few more specifics. Um, and also, uh, again, the track was very, very busy. Um, um, okay. uh, there was a lot going on there. And it was very genre like I said, very prog rock feeling to it. So um, for a current to shop it now, um, unless you're going for a period piece, like in a for a movie back in right. those days. Well, mo um, most of the pitches I do are for those kind of period pieces because of what I have. Mm -hmm. um, because um, uh, a lot of these songs, well, who is it? Michael Lasko who said the, uh, you know, let me listen to somebody's song and I can tell you within five years of when they graduated, you know, it, which is kind of true. <laughs> but that, the way I look at it is there's there's a placement for almost every song you can think of in some movie. Yes. And there's a lot of retro movies around. Definitely. And when you look at listings, there are a lot of listings for retro, retro sounding stuff. Yes, now, definitely. No, definitely. You know, that's that's and, true. And I'm not a rapper or a hip hop guy, you know, so I'm not contemporary in that sense. No, no. But that's OK. I mean, that doesn't yeah. bother me. It's more like, OK, where do I spend my money to try to place it? Mm -hmm. that's the, and, you know, once you're 25 in the in music industry, you might as well do film and TV placements. That's where you're going to get most money. I mean, unless you're unless you're you've already made it and you're touring and selling merch and all that stuff and doing live concerts. But, well, it's all about merch anymore. Yeah. Yeah, sixty-six you know? percent of the money in music is yeah. Music. So placement is is the key, yeah. you know, getting it. Um, so well, then put a sitar in there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That'll really make it uh, retro sound. Well, it will yeah, definitely yeah. define it to a certain yeah, yeah. place. But <laughs> but um, uh, I I would say with with the instrumentation that you do have, I would. Um, uh, creates a, I'd have to listen to it again, okay. a, a, you know, um, yeah, to see I mean, where I would um, feature some uh, arrangement part or, you know, mm -hmm. what, whatever the, the instrumentation was or whether I would add something or whether I'd take something away or something, but um, keeping it diverse and, um, um Yeah, it's 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 a good period piece, and um, so yeah. But I would okay. work on it just a little bit. I would fine tune it a little bit more. Okay. All right. Or as writers, I mean, you can always write another one that's different and right. All these notes that we're taking right now, those are things that you add to the next song, and that's you know. Sure. But, well, there you go. Well, <laughs> but also there are a lot of songs that you can that are worth taking to the next place. You know, um, th um, just because they're they can get so close, and then all it needs is just the you know something will pop in your head or one little thing, you know that mistake or something. Mm -hmm. You'll just be playing around with it or playing along 
with it, whether it's a keyboard or whatever, or singing along and you come up with a different alternate background vocal or something or something that is that riff or is that hook or that thing that that defines it and suddenly it becomes this whole other thing. I I'm I love reading about how people came about with songs and sometimes it takes so many years. And um then some one little thing will happen and it just yeah. turns it into that thing that uh, we all know and love. But for the longest time it was it was not that thing at all and it wasn't going anywhere and they you know yeah, shelved it. Rock. Yeah, I love that Professor of Rock show on uh YouTube. It's really good. Mm. Is that he goes through all that history stuff and it's just incredible. So yeah, you guys want to check that out, Professor of Rock. I'm gonna Yeah, that's good to know. Let me write that down. Yeah. The guy's been around for a while. His name's Adam Reeder and he's been doing that for a while and it's addicting for me because you know all, all these hit songs and hit songwriters, and quite often it'll have really good interviews with those people, which is really yes. Cool. So it's a lot of fun. Well, that's what like as that's why I go to ASCAP Expo. I'm not a singer songwriter at all. I marvel at all of you who write songs and are inspired and take your whatever's happening in your, to your life and you turn it into the song and and um, and that that happened to me once so i i have that feeling where something happened in my life and i i had to express it musically and i went so this is what that's like mm -hmm. um but that's that's only happened once but i think that that was the universe just saying okay so now you understand what they're doing you go back to doing what you do and um so i'm always in awe of singer songwriters what, what was there was a uh like a six episode documentary on uh song what was it song shifters or song and there was uh dua lipa was on there and there was uh and each one um, um alicia keys was one episode they're like 20 minutes long and they all talk about what was going on in their life when this song came about and it's always like there was really something definite in how it came out and then they collaborated with somebody and then they this built but um, there was it was so personal every single one of these episodes i wish i could remember the name of it because i binge watched it on a on a train <laughs> coming back from oregon one night i just um it was unbelievable. I wish there were more, and I wish I could remember what the name of it was. But there are quite a, a few different things like that out there, you know. So, but yeah. Professor Rock is daily, so that's why I really like that one. Oh, every okay. day he's got a very cool new story, and it's a lot of fun. Wow, that's a lot of work for him. It really is, but of course, it generates a whole lot of revenue for him too. You know. Well, there you go. Which, which is part of it as well. You know, it's one of the things that I've been watching so many of these people that are, are getting you know strong revenue streams just because of what they do on youtube that's mm -hmm. falling off a little bit but it's still a big part of you know the potential for earning a living in music well you now know, it's, it's Instagram not just about TikTok. the music but it's about yeah. the music and your story and everything else so he's not a podcast um he's not a podcast but he's on youtube but you know and that's what's cool about it too because then you get to see all these legends that you he grew up with and like now they're well, our age but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny how that happens huh yeah but, um, but it's very cool you know? wow well i need to check that out for sure because like i said ascap expo i just love going to to sit and hear people tell the stories of how the song came about or um one of my favorites was bill withers you know um ain't no sunshine when she's gone talking about that that broke every single rule about what a hit song should be it starts with the chorus wow it's only two minutes 12 seconds long wow. um 
with a part of it going, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. And he didn't start writing songs till he was like 35, 40 years old. So he was too old. And that song, everything about that song was wrong. You must have heard that at the ASCAP meeting when they interviewed him. Well, he Justin was, Termalek. yeah, he, and one of yeah. them, uh, uh, he was the star attraction, you know. Yeah. Um, and um, boy, was he ever good. Just he was. the he was. wisdom yeah, that, that he spewed. Yeah. He was fantastic. And boy, he took no prisoners. He suffered no fools. Yeah. Some some girl, poor, poor girl got up there and asked him, I wish I could remember what the question was, but it, it was just so lame. And um, and <laughs> and he didn't humiliate her because but she wouldn't have known it anyway. Um, but uh, um, but yeah, it was uh, she, she really asked for it and he he gave it to her. But, in a, in a, you know, some people have that gift. They can really insult you and you say thank you. You know, because you, you think they're saying something else. Um, but uh, anyway, he he was he was incredible, but I will never forget. That's why it's song structure and chorus and all of that, um, where it's, things are supposed to be isn't it's it's just a guide and it's worked for a lot of things. And it's not not every song has to be like that. Um, the important thing is that you have that message that you hit home with and with the music to support it and um, tell that story that uh, the world can relate to in, in a way they've never heard it before. You know, that's, you, you can't lose, I don't think. Absolutely. Wow, it's been a really great night with you, Denise. Thank you so much. You rock. Thanks very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. And I just uh, thank you so much for having me and asking me, Jimmy. And I just, you guys all inspire me so much. And because it is, it's always about the music. Always, always. It's not, and it's about your music. That's the thing. For me, it's, uh, it's not a, it's not my music, it's your music. And so I'm, like I said, I have such regard and respect and awe for anybody who is a creator like you are all. And I just encourage you all to just keep going at it. And, you know, there's so many tools and keep educating yourself and keep feeling, 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 feeling. So, the rest of us can feel it too. Thank you very much, Lenise. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so for coming welcome. out. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. We'll see you guys next time then. And yes, it is going to be on YouTube so you can check the archives. Okay. Cool. So have, have a good one, guys. Thank you. Showcase. Thank you.